This is John Grigsby with CSTV News. <music> Cancer. It's hard, it's challenging, but most of all, we all have faith, we all have hope. We ask you to show your support to Emma Orr. She attends Cedar Springs Beach Elementary, and we all love her strong will and believe in her. We all wish the best for you, Emma. To Grant King with more details. Hello, I'm Grant King from CSTV News. I'm here at Beach Elementary School today to interview a couple of faculty members about a little girl named Emma. Well, Emma Orr is a second grader here at Beach Elementary. And her story is that she has recently been diagnosed with neuroplastoma. And that's a very serious type of cancer. And uh, she is now currently uh, under treatment at DeVos Children's Hospital. Well, we've only known Emma a short time because she's a second grader and she's just come to us at Beach. But uh, whenever a young child uh, is diagnosed with cancer. It's shocking, it's scary, and uh, it really hurts that much more because she's so young and so early in her life. Uh, just meeting her the first day, she is a special little girl, she has a special spirit. You can see that at the hospital, and then also meeting and talking with her mom. You know, they're a special family, and uh, you can just tell, you know, by meeting them. Well, her family have created a GoFundMe account uh, that really kind of gives you some information. If you go to this link, you can do an electronic donation, either with a credit card or a, a debit card. But it also, um, they do some nice updates on where she is in her treatment and those types of things. But Beach Elementary, uh, specifically Mr. Harmon, her second grade teacher, have uh, put together uh, Emma bracelets that we are selling for a dollar for students and two dollars uh, for adults and uh, those are on sale at the beach office but we're also bringing them around to different school buildings uh, for students and adults to buy. I think you know the bracelet sales are being very helpful the GoFundMe page and then also for me personally I think the just praying for her. Yes uh, I do that uh, we want the best for her we can't wait to see her back here and uh, as the whole stadium chanted last Friday night, uh, Emma, fight, win. Emma, fight, win! We wish you the best, Emma, in your fight with cancer. If you wish to support her and her family, you can purchase wristbands for the Beach Elementary office for a dollar, or you can go support her on their GoFundMe page. This has been Grant King from CSTV News. Now back to you. Thank you, Grant. We all wish you well, Emma. Stay strong. Now on a lighter note, to help this mindset of some students at Cedar Springs High School, we're going to talk to you about jobs and what it's like to be a student with a job. Hopefully this will help you and handle how to handle it all. Let's go to Caitlin with the topic. Hi, Caitlin Rons here from CSTV. Today in our school, many of our students have many different jobs. Let's talk to a few students to see what their jobs are like. Hello, I am here with Kelly Samet about her upcoming job. Where do you work and what do you do? I work at the Cedar Sings Brewery and what I do is I do prep cook and line cook for them. Over the past summer I went out to Washington State to work on a hay farm which I raked hay, baled hay, and tendered hay. I work at Buffalo Wild Wings and I'm a cook there. What is your at work atmosphere like? It's like working in almost any kind of restaurant really. It's just sometimes it gets stressful but at the end of the day you're really proud of the stuff that you put out. and the work that you put into everything. Does your job give you any opportunities in the future? It really shows me how to work with others in a very stressful or non-stressful environment and also shows me how I'm going to have to work with a business before I can start my own. In the future I can apply these skills to my future farm. I guess it makes me a better cook. What are your hours like? I start right after football practice and I work till midnight. Thanks guys. Keep working hard, have fun in the real world. This has been Caitlin Rons with CSTV, now back to you. Thank you, Caitlin, for that. Now to fill you in on what's happening in the world, we're gonna give it to Evan Lewis to give you world news in 60 seconds. Hello, this is World News with Evan Lewis. Last Thursday at Oregon Community College, a lone gunman killed nine victims. 
aging from 18 to 67, before turning the gun on himself, which brings up a heated topic of gun control, which will most likely play a huge role in the next election. Now, switching over to a rainier part of the world, England's rugby team is under investigation for alleged breach of protocol when match officials were approached by players and coaches throughout the day of the Rugby World Cup. Now in the Middle East, four Israeli civilians have been killed, two of which were killed by Israeli soldiers over the past few days in an escalation of violence, prompted the, prompting the Israeli government to shut down the old city to Palestine. Now, in lighter news, here a French bulldog named Jules spring into action when two bears jumped the fence of her surrounding California home. A home security camera caught Jules barking and chasing the bears away, which were several times her size. Now thank you, this has been Real News Evan Lewis. Thank you Evan. I always get surprised with what I hear about what's going on in the world. But now we have sports with Jonathan Wolfarth. Thank you John, and welcome to sports with Jonathan Wolfarth at CSTV. We're deep into the fall sports season, but that doesn't mean that the action is slowing down. Teams are still going out and playing with full effort. Some teams even have hopes of continuing on to the postseason. Earlier, I caught up with sophomore Dallas Moore of the Cedar Springs cross country team to see how they are preparing for the rest of their season. Dallas, how's the team doing so far this season? The team is doing really good. At this moment right now, we're ranked fifth in regionals and top three teams make it. Dallas, what are some of the team goals this season? I know one big goal we have is, like I just said, to make it to state. What, are you, what is your team doing to try to get to the next level? We would do a PPM. It's kind of like an all-out thing that like, you run all out. Start off with a mile, two mile, three mile. And I think the max some people went to, some people went to were four miles. Does your team have any pre-race rituals? Yeah, we do a chant. It's where four-year captains as their seniors, they stand in the middle and then all the other team circles around them and then we do a chant. At first we kind of like whisper it just in our group, but then after a certain time the captains shout out and then we follow along with them and it's a lot of fun. It always pumps us up. Alright, well it sounds like you guys have a lot in store for the rest of the season. Thank you for this interview, Dallas. As the cross country team prepares to battle for a spot at state, it reminds us that sometimes we all have to battle in life. Many of those battles go beyond sports. Battling breast cancer is something that takes immense strength and courage. In 2015, an estimated 231,840 cases of invasive breast cancer will be diagnosed in the U.S. alone. Breast cancer is the most common cancer among women and the second most common cancer overall. Efforts can be made to help combat this terrible disease. Last Friday, Sears Springs held its fourth annual Pink Game in honor of those who have battled breast cancer. I sat down with sophomore Allie Sparling and senior varsity football player Taylor Van Dyke to get their impression of the pink game. What was the atmosphere in the student section like for the pink game? It was more together than a regular student section because we were there for like a one cause and it was just way more together than this. Um, what does the pink game mean to you? Well, it kind of like hits me like home because my mom had cancer. So it's like, it just like hits me and like we, I just want to like make a change in the school and the community. Do you think the pink game does good? Oh yeah, I think it brings in so it brings in so many good causes and like it just makes our community come together it's just for everything, you know. What does the pink game mean to you? Uh, the pink game is just a great game where we get the whole community involved and people outside that may not watch all of our football games get to attend this game and kind of see what our community is like and bring those survivors together. Do you think the pink game does good? Uh, the pink game is an awesome game to be a part of. It's uh, just another way to bring the community together and it really uh, gets our like student body really supports the pink game too with the athletic leadership council there uh, supporting us uh, the football team and just the student section too was great that night with all the pink. How special was it for you guys to go out and win on the pink game, Red Flannel Eve, a senior night, and against Forest Hills Northern? It was, there was a lot of emotions involved though. There was excitement, there was, you know, sadness with the senior night, and then there was just that, you know, that, uh, the, I don't know what you'd say, but the, 
sympathy you feel for those survivors with uh, breast cancer and other types of cancers. It was just an awesome night. It's a special thing when communities can come together over something terrible and provide strength and comfort to those in need of it. This has been Sports with Jonathan Wolfarth. Back to you, John. This was John Grigsby with CSTV News. Thank you for watching, and it's a great day to be a Red Hawk.